continue our look at topic two, the ecosystem, looking specifically at 2.3.2, which is to describe and evaluate methods for estimating the abundance of organisms. And the term abundance is a key term that we will uh, identify and define. In highlighting this main objective, we will also define the term diversity and we will apply Simpson's diversity index and outline its significance. So with these three objectives, let's move ahead to consider our case study. And in our case study, we are assigned to estimate the frequency, another term that we need to define, and density of ornamental plants in a park. Ornamental plants meaning plants that are there for the purpose of, uh, of beautification. And in parks you have uh, plants like these in your picture. So your job as an assistant curator at a park uh, allows you to keep track of what's growing where. So your job on this given day as the assistant curator is to assess and report on the success of 10 plots with seedlings of two ornamentals. Uh, and here you have their biological names, Helianthus anus, the sunflower, and Gazania ringens, also known as Gazania commonly. Uh, you have four hours to complete a count of ten plots so time does not permit you to go in and count every single seedling so therefore you need some kind of sampling methodology and this methodology will be carried out as follows you take six random samples from each plot and you check for the abundance and diversity. You report on the density of each species per unit of area, the frequency of each species, and then you use Simpson's index to present a summary value for species diversity. So your equipment for such an activity uh, includes a measuring tape, a one meter square quadrat, an important two data tables, a pencil and, and a, a list of random number coordinates. Let's have a look at some of our key terms before we proceed to look at the actual plot and how that's laid out. So the term abundance refers to the number of individuals of a species in a specified area. It includes density, which refers to the number of individuals per unit of area, like five plants per square meter. Or it can also refer to the overall population, like 750 seedlings in a plot, let's say, or 750 mice in a barn. Then we have the term frequency, a technical one, which you will see uh, uh, in application very soon. It's, it refers to the probability of finding a species in a series of random samples. So suppose you have uh, 10 samples and 9 times out of 10 a sunflower turns up, then the frequency of finding the sunflower would be 9 out of 10, which would give us a frequency of 90%. So in 9 samples out of the 10 that we took we found at least one sunflower so therefore we say its frequency would be 90 percent this uh, measure is usually applied to plant populations as uh, as they are stable populations not moving like animals like most animal populations would be moving to give a measure of their spread or their distribution in an area because if you think about it sometimes uh, the sampling methods can give a high number of organisms in a plot, but it would not necessarily indicate how well those organisms are spread out 
or the distribution within that area. So by taking several random samples and saying that if you get nine, nine of your ten samples, you find the species present, you say its frequency is 90%. Species diversity is our third term, and this includes the variety of species and their population. So the variety, all the different types of species that you have, and how many you have of each. With that information, you can combine them into one given number, which we refer to as an index of diversity. And there are several indices of diversity. The one that we will use here is the Simpsons Index and it basically amounts to a, a statistical combination of population and variation to represent the, the term species diversity in a more concise manner. So let's move in and have a look now at our actual sample plot. And it is our job to take six samples within this plot of ornamental plants just to explain a little bit about it to you, uh, these yellow dots represent Helianthus anus, the sunflower. As you can see, that's our picture of a sunflower. And Gazania is the orange dot. And the first thing we need to do as we take our six samples is to decide where this sample is going to be. And uh, for this, we would need a table of random numbers or an electronic means of generating random coordinates. These are available online or in tables of books. So let's just say that this green dot here represents our random number generator. And we generate the random coordinates of 3, 5. In our imaginary grid that we have put over the plot where the seedlings are growing. We have uh, 0 to 9 on one axis and 0 to 12 on the other axis. In the real world, we would be out there with our tape measuring from this point to this point 9 meters. So the 3 coordinate represents this point on the x-axis and we go up to the Y coordinate which is 5 and that gives us this point right here now we need to decide how we're going to place our sampling area or our quadrat and a quadrat is simply a square a sampling square typically a quadrat is one square meter but it could be any size you you need really any size that is convenient for the sampling area that you have so for this particular study uh, a one meter square quadrat is appropriate and it's just a square that's laid down you would have to decide exactly where you would put it down and then keep that constant for all the samples that you are taking so Let's decide that we will put the quadrat on the upper right area of the point that we have located. And the spelling of this uh, tool that we use is not to be confused with a quadrant. It is a quadrat, Q-U-A-D-R-A-T, the quadrat. So the quadrat is placed in here, and then we proceed to count the number of plants in here and we notice that we have four sunflowers growing within the area we disregard anything that's touching the outside or outside of the square and then we record our sample number one generated from random number three five and we had four sunflowers in there and no gazania I would like you to use uh, our plot here to complete the remaining five samples and then to fill out 
the relevant sections here on the table. Once you have that completed, and you can uh, move back and forth as required to locate your data. Right? Remember, if anything falls on the borderline of the quadrat, you need to decide whether you would include it or exclude it, and then keep that constant throughout your procedure. Also, it's important that if we have decided we are placing the quadrat in a certain way to keep that consistent also. Once you have all of your raw data, then you can move to doing some processing of this information. And the, f the four requirements that you have to meet are to determine the diversity index, the mean density of each species, the frequency of each species, and the estimated population of each species. I would leave these four things uh, up to your thinking for you to decide how you would go about determining all of these parameters. Obviously, there is a reason why I have given you the, the dimensions of the plot. And that is to help you in the estimate of the population of each species. The frequency of each species, if you need that, the method for that repeated, you can go back to the earlier part of the, of the, uh, of the lesson. And the mean density, it's for you to reflect on the fact that you have six samples. So what's going to be the mean density? Each sample is the number of individual plants per square meter. And then the diversity index. This is the formula down here that we are using for the diversity index. n times n minus 1 over the sum of little n times n minus 1 where where the diversity is, is, is what you're finding and big N is the total number of all species and little n is the number of individual species so the Simpsons diversity index is a composite value that uh, that is created by both uh, the diversity of species the different kinds of species that you have the variety uh, and uh, the the number the population of each type together that gives you the diversity and finally and we will discuss this further in class I would like you to consider ways of using sampling methodology similar to this and the information that we had in previous lessons to describe a strategy to determine the biomass of lemna or the duckweed in this habitat here. So you notice that uh, we have a fairly large area of duckweed which float on the surface of this aquatic habitat and I would like you to suggest a strategy to determine the dry biomass of lemna in this habitat for the purpose of constructing a pyramid of biomass. And I will see you when all of these are completed for our class discussion.